Hi guys, welcome to the lesson of partial differential equations. So in the previous class, we discussed about the Enriclet problem for a rectangle for the Laplace equation. Uh, now we are going to talk about the Newman problem for a rectangle for the Laplace equation. So here is the Laplace equation, dou i squared u or dou x squared plus dou i squared u over dou y squared equals zero. So this is a steady state problem, steady state equation in two dimension. Uh, and uh, uh, we know that uh, we are going to find the behavior of uh, temperature in a, a rectangular metallic plate. So the boundary conditions are given and we can see that, that these are the derivative boundary conditions. So Newman boundary conditions, right? So del squared u is equals to zero inside the rectangle. And on the boundaries, uh, we are given uh, u y of x comma zero is equals to zero. <clears throat> and uh, u y of x comma b is equals to some function of x, u, y of uh, zero comma y, uh, sorry, uh, uh, yes, uh, zero comma y is equals to zero, and u, y of uh, a comma y is also equals to zero. So these are the boundary conditions for the Newman problem. And we are going to start the problem. So uh, start solving the problem by using the method of separation of variables. So we assume that <coughs> u is equals to x, y, and then we find the derivative respectively. So here we formulate the equation x double prime over x is equals to negative y double prime over y is equals to lambda. Now we will solve for three cases of lambda. We have case one that is lambda is equals to zero. Therefore, we have the equations x double prime and y double prime equals zero. Now we will solve the differential equations. Then we will apply the boundary conditions. Uh, first, we will find the derivative because uh, the boundaries are given uh, derivatives are given at the boundaries. Therefore, x prime is equals to c1. And x prime of zero implies that c1 is equals to zero, right? So here c1 is equals to zero and for uh, y prime is equals to c3 and y prime of zero is again zero. Therefore, c3 is zero. So the, pro, uh, the solution for this particular case will be u of x, y is equals to c2 times c4. So we can call it A, right? We can call it A because it's a product of two constants. Therefore, we can say that it, it is an other constant, right? Now we'll uh, solve for case two, that is lambda is equals to P squared. Therefore, X double prime is equals to P squared X, Y double prime is equals to negative P squared Y. Uh, the, this is the second order uh, ordinary differential equations, homogeneous with constant coefficients. Therefore, the solution for the equation is x is equals to c5 times e to the power px plus c6 times e to the power negative px. Now we will apply the boundary conditions uh, to this equation. Uh, and so we have the derivative boundary conditions. Therefore, we will evaluate the derivative that is x prime is equals to pc5 e to the power px minus pc6 e to the power negative px. And we will apply the conditions x prime of zero is equals to zero, which implies that C5 minus C6 equals zero. Then X prime of A is equals to zero, which implies that this equation, that is this function is equals to zero. So solving equation one and equation two, we will get C5 is equals to C6 is equals to zero, right? So we have trivial solution here. Therefore, we'll move to the third case that is lambda is equals to negative P squared. We will solve uh, the differential equations respectively. Here is a solution for the uh, X and here is the solution for Y, All right? So now again, we will calculate the derivative that is X prime is equal to negative AP sine PX plus BP cosine PX. 
And for y prime, we have this function, right? We will apply the boundary conditions that is x prime of zero is equals to zero, which implies that b is equals to zero. And then we will apply x prime of a is equals to zero, which implies sine p a is equals to zero. So from here, we can get p is equals to n pi over a because we know that sine inverse zero is equals to n pi. All right, so now uh, our p is evaluated and we will put this p in the equations. So this is x is equals to a cosine n pi x over a, and this is y is equals to c to the power p y plus c to the power negative p y, right? Uh, because we have y prime of zero uh, is equals to zero, which implies that c is equals to d. So here we can put c in place of d. So we will get two c times cosine hyperbolic p y, right? So. Now we can see that uh, the solution for this uh, equation is uxy is equals to a cosine n pi x over a times two c cosine hyperbolic py. So again, we can plug uh, this n pi over a in place of p here, all right? So again, we are uh, saying that two ac is equals to a n, summation n is equals to one to infinity. Therefore, we have the general solution for this problem. Now we are going to, uh, sorry, not general solution, but, uh, because we have to use the principle of superposition because we have two non-trivial solutions in this case, right? So the first solution is from case one and the uh, second solution is from case three. So we will sum up these solutions to get the general solution for this equation. Now we are going to apply the last boundary condition to find these coefficients a and a n. Therefore, uh, we can uh, simply put a is equals to half a naught to make it a pro uh, proper cosine series. Therefore, now this is a proper cosine series, one of half a naught plus sigma a n cosine n pi x over a times cosine hyperbolic n pi y over a, right? Now we have uh, been given that u y uh, is equals to function of x, right? When y is equals to b. So we will uh, evaluate the derivative with respect to y. So here is the derivative and now we will apply the uh, condition at y is equals to b, right? So this is the equation. Uh, then we can calculate this uh, a n by using the a Fourier series that is a n is equals to two or n pi sine hyperbolic n pi b or a times integral from zero to a f of x times cosine n pi x over a right and for a naught we have two or a times the integral zero to a f of x dx so this is the general uh, Fourier series and we can evaluate these uh, coefficients and plug into the general solution therefore we will get the particular solution for this equation right. So now we will talk about the mixed problem for rectangle where we are given with uh, the, uh, some of the, the conditions are Newman and some of the conditions are Dreklet. Therefore, the procedure is same. We will apply the method of separation of variable. We will check for three cases. So case number one, that is lambda is equals to zero implies x is equals to this function, y is equals to this function, right? So we'll apply the boundary conditions, x prime of uh, the boundaries of uh, x are given u x zero comma y and u x a comma y. Therefore, we need to take the derivative. So x prime is equals to c1, which implies that c1 is equals to zero. Therefore, we are left with x is equals to c2 here. And then for this uh, problem, this equation, we have y of zero is equals to zero, which implies c4 is equals to zero. Therefore, we have ux comma y is equals to c2 times c3y. Now for c2, c3, we can say that this product is equals to c because these are constants. Therefore, we have the solution cy, right? So we can call it as solution one. Now we'll check for case two and case two is trivial. You can check by yourself by applying the boundary conditions for lambda is equals to p squared, right? Now move to case three where lambda is equals to negative p square. Again, we have these equations. 
we will calculate the derivative here, apply the boundary conditions, x prime of zero is zero, which implies b is zero. Therefore, you left with x is equals to a cosine pi x. Again, evaluate the derivative because x prime of a is given as zero. Therefore, we need x prime here. So there is a p sine. Uh, uh, this is the derivative of this function. So we'll apply uh, x is equals to a, All right? So negative a p sine p is equals to zero. For that, we have p is equals to n pi over a. Then we have the solution for x is equals to a cosine n pi x over a. Now for y, we are going to use the conditions for y. That is y of zero is equals to zero, which implies c is, d is equals to negative c. So we'll plug here. We will get y is equals to 2c sine hyperbolic n pi y over a, right? Now we will combine the solutions uh, using the superposition. The solution from case one is this one and the solution from case three is this one, right? And now to find the coefficients, we have the condition at ux comma b, therefore we will plug b instead of y everywhere. Right, and then this is a cosine series, so we can evaluate that C B is equals to one over a times the integral zero to a of x dx, and a n is equals to two over a sine hyperbolic and pi b over a times the integral zero to a of x cosine and pi x over a. Right. Now we can plug the values here in the formula, and we generate a general uh, solution for the equation of this type. Right. Now we'll solve an example for a mixed problem. We have an equation, Laplace equation. We have the conditions here, right? Uh, these are the mixed conditions. Therefore, again, using the method of separation of variable uh, and solving for cases, case uh, one, case two, case three, case one is where lambda is equals to zero. We get these equations, right? So X prime is equals to C1 x prime of zero is zero, therefore c1 is zero. Again, y of pi is equals to zero, therefore c3 pi plus c4 is equals to zero, which implies c3 is equals to negative c4 or pi. Plug in the equation here, All right? So you'll get ux comma y is equals to c2 times this function where we can call it uh, c2 times c3 is equals to c naught or c we can call it any constant, right? Because this the product of constant is again a constant. So we will get this uh, solution, right? So this is non-trivial solution. So we will need this solution at the later stages. So again, checking for the case two that is lambda is equals to p squared, we would solve this and we get a trivial solution for this case. You can solve it and check it, right? By applying the boundary conditions. And then we will move on to case three, that is lambda is equals to negative p squared. Again, we have these classical equations we are using since the heat equation, right? Apply the boundary conditions, we will get p is equals to n, and then d is equals to negative c to the power two p pi from the boundaries of conditions of y, right? So, here we can now see that x is equals to a cosine nx and y is equals to this function, right? So plug into the equation and here we generate the journal solution for this problem by using the principle of superposition, right? So now we are going to apply the last condition to find these uh, coefficients c naught and a n. Again, this is a cosine series, therefore C naught times negative pi is equals to one over pi from zero to pi, X squared DX. Or you can also uh, uh, write it in this way that this is one over two. When this is, if you write one over two here to make it a, a proper cosine series, then you have to put two here, right? So both ways are uh, correct and you can take any of them, right? So. Here, C naught times negative pi is equals to two over pi uh, because here we have put one over two, right? And we find this as uh, negative pi over three. So C naught is equals to negative pi over three. In fact, this will be now 
negative two pi over three, right? And when we will plug back here, so two and two will cancel out, this two and this two will cancel out, and we will only left with uh, negative pi over three there, right? So this is our C naught, and then we have a n is equals to two over pi, uh, pi times one minus e to the power two n pi zero to pi. This integral, we will solve the integral by using uh, the bipart rule. And here is the solution for the integral. We can see here. And so the solution for this equation will be now, now this is, we can see the journal solution. Here we have the journal solution, this one. And uh, this is, uh, yes, this was the journal solution. You can write here a journal solution. Just we are going to plug the values of a n and c naught in this solution, which we have evaluated here. Therefore, we will get this from right. So this is the journal uh, particular solution for this problem. And note that uh, for this problem, we use e to the power n y minus e to the power two n pi minus n y here. We can also formulate it in this way to make it a hyperbolic function. You can see here and you can check that what we did, what we simply uh, took the e to the power negative pi, uh, negative n pi outside the bracket. Therefore, we um, added n y minus n pi here, and this is already there. So it is again a sine hyperbolic uh, function. Then we can write sine hyperbolic n times y minus pi, right? So this is the usual way to solve these problems for um, the Laplace equation, we have a rectangular uh, coordinate system. We have a rectangular plate. We are going to uh, use um, the separation of variable method for finding the temperature throughout the plate, uh, right? So hope you guys uh, will learn from this lesson and that's all for the time being. Thank you.